Hi, I'm in Bray County, Wicklow, and I'm here because the local council put a piece on their Facebook page that one of their librarians was retiring and the reaction it got from people saying what a nice and helpful guy he was and also talking about librarians in general made me want to come along to the library here and see will he talk to me. His name is Mick Kelleher. I've worked in this library for the last, well now, 43 years and eight months. I remember we had an issue with uh, Milton Boone novels in the 70s, and I spoke to a person, a lady who I thought might possibly have been responsible. I remember saying to her that these books had been only out once, and we had noticed that one of them had some pages missing when it came back. And she said to me, I'd never do a thing like that, Michael, she said. And then she said in the next minute, she said, but they're disgusting these days, some of them. <laughs> Michael was great because um, when we joined the library, he got to know both my name and my wife's name, and has been able to address it by name ever since. Okay. Which is quite an achievement given the number of people he has here. And he can also come down to your house and get the overdue books back because he knows where you live. <laughs> <laughs> we stopped doing that some years ago, but it was a feature of early, early life in the library service actually that one could call the houses. Yeah. It calls people's houses? Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure of the legality of it now, but we did it then. You're kind of like repo man for the yes, library. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's in it. It was public use. Stop at a few doors and generally scare them a bit, and uh, they'd all they'd become running later, not at all. A few dogs to be encountered and everything, you know. We, we happily we gave that up. Okay, and thanks. as a consequence, sometimes you would get other books returned from houses you didn't call to because the word was out that you were wrong. <laughs> I wasn't exactly very menacing. I was scary. That's where we left, I think. That was really my Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. No. Yeah, this is the old Carnegie that we're in here. It was completed around 1910. It had a men's and ladies' reading room, and they were separate. Oh, they were completed. They didn't, they were, never the twain did meet, as it were. The newspapers were available in the men's reading room. They were not newspapers originally in the ladies' reading room where it was considered that ladies wouldn't be interested in news of the day. That, now that changed as a, to some extent as a consequence of one irate lady insisting that the papers should be made available for her reading at the time, and rightly so. I mean, we had some, that was, that was, these are the days of the suffragettes, obviously, one must remember. There's a lovely article on here about him written by Tom French, and look, all around the world, of all the people that he's helped, university find him such a helpful, wonderful person, and I think that's amazing. I'd like to think that, it would, that I would have taken a little time out to help, particularly students, to maybe just take that little extra and feel that that little question they had or that inquiry or that book they wanted was important on that day. The hard question is probably the one that's kind of ne that can be a little bit vague, you know, when somebody comes in and they don't know the book or the author, mm. and you have to tease it out. They're, they're easier done these days because of the internet. But in the old days, it was, could you find me, I'm looking for the words of, of a poem, such as maybe The Green Eye of the Little Yellow God, oh, yeah. or Kipling's If, and to find that when you consulted the book that you knew it was in, that somebody had removed it. <laughs> but this happens, yes. Just, it's, it's working with people, and I think that's probably why it suits me so well, because it's, he works, he's so good with people, and he's so good with knowledge as well, and he combines the two. Michael represents to me what a librarian is. More of a calling than a job. Right. It definitely is. A vocation. It's a vocation in itself. He's got the most phenomenal brain of anybody I've ever worked with or met. And he's got that kindness and the most thoughtful person you could ever imagine to, to meet or work with. And I will miss him so much, and this is why I'm really struggling. <laughs> he's fantastic. Nice. Irreplaceable. An interesting thing that used to occur, actually, and I don't think we've currently got any example of it, when I started in 75, a lady who worked was, was still working in the main post office needed help with a crossword. 
This continued right up to about two years ago when the last person stopped doing them. So crosswords are a feature of the library for 40 years, I would say. Well, you all did the crossword well, design, no. did you? Well, she, no, we were asked to fill in the back, fill in some of the answers. <laughs> I'm not really anxious about being a child. I'm largely on my own in a sense, uh, so I'm used to that. Uh, I mean, I'd have to be very careful that I structure my life and get up in the morning and do the basics, obviously. But um, I think you reach a stage when you get a little bit, little bit maybe, what's the word, weary, maybe a little bit battle fatigued, you know, in a sense, and um, feel that you've reached a, a point where you were it's unlikely that you can make any significant contribution maybe at the level where you're working, but you maybe ought to have the opportunity to do something at a personal level. Okay. And I want to do that maybe, you know. Well, we did have an individual in the library at one time who was actually tearing out pages, and it took us a long time to track him down. He was known to, we called him the library ripper. Eventually, we did find him tearing out a page, and, but he said, there's nothing written on it, he said. But he did considerable damage, you know, and it's very What, what was his reason? I, I, I don't know. I, I thought, and unfortunately, if it, if, if it was a reason or some of his rationale, and so far as you could describe it as a rationale, that he might possibly have been trying to expunge the British presence in Ireland from some of the copies of books in the library, which is going to be a Herculean task. <laughs> <laughs> he put the pages up his jumper as he left the library apparently and cycled away. Yes, on your retirement. When is the best time to start thinking about retirement? Before the boss does. <laughs> Wishing you all the very best for the future. Many thanks for your friendship and all the great musical treasures you have found. Got your marks, famously observed, I think. I have one more important thing to do before I quit. Retire. I'm not checking out, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm good, good. But the mini's very good as well. Of course it is, I've seen that. Yeah.